George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. Okay, so we're going to talk about when is three days not really three days, because sometimes it could be two and sometimes it could be five. This video is about rescission periods. Thank you for coming into the creditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson. And, you know, a lot of times when we had the new uh, combined truth and lending uh, RESPA disclosure come out, there was a new three day time period from the time that the uh, initial closing disclosure goes out to when the borrower can sign it and there's supposed to be a three day window on when that happens. Well, there's also, if you're doing a refinance transaction, there's an additional three day, what's called a rescission period that you have to have on a refinance from the time that you sign the closing papers to the time that you can actually wire the money and record the transaction. So some of these timelines can get a little bit tricky and I'm going to try to do this as quickly and concisely as I can and maybe even give you a trick to try to remember how it works. But anyway, on a purchase transaction, uh, whether it's a purchase or a refinance transaction, every transaction requires a closing disclosure to go out before that transaction can close. Okay, so before you can sign the closing papers. So we have a three day uh, period here and we have a also a three day period here but they are not measured the same way. So a closing disclosure, pretty much a closing disclosure is a waste of time to go out on a Wednesday. The reason is is because if it goes out on a Wednesday, even if it goes out at 11 p.m. At, at night and the borrower signs it at 11 p.m., that is considered the first day. So you've got, if you have a, if you have a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and your closing disclosure goes out here, this is considered day one, uh, this is day two, this is day three. You've met your three days, but now you can't sign technically until Saturday. Okay, So this loan is actually going to close on Monday, the following Monday from when the closing disclosure went out. So ideally your closing disclosure, if it went out on a Tuesday, okay. Well, look what happens. If, or I'm sorry, if it goes out on a Thursday, well, this becomes day one. This becomes day two. But then we have Saturday. Saturday is now day three. And you can still sign your purchase agreement. You're closing on that one also on Monday. So Saturday counts as a rescission period day for all loans, whether it's for a closing disclosure or for a refinance, you can count Saturdays. What you cannot count is you cannot count Sundays and federal holidays. And it just seems like we have a lot of Mondays, you know, um, MLK Day, President's Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day. There's a lot of Monday holidays out there. And so when you know that you've got that going on, that Monday and the Sunday do not count. Okay. Now, if you're closing a refinance transaction, they count the three days a little bit different. Okay. So if your closing disclosure, for example, went out on a, on a, on a Thursday, okay, then that means that you could sign the papers as close as Monday, because from the closing disclosure, we've got Thursday counts as day one. If you sign the closing disclosure on Thursday, Friday's rescission, Saturday, so that's day one, day two is Friday, day three is Saturday, you can sign the closing documents on Monday. So that means on Monday, you sign your closing papers for your refinance, but then you have a three day rescission period before the loan can fund and record. Well, that three days is counted differently. Monday doesn't count as day one. So you actually have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is your day one, two, three. This gap in here, so here is where you sign. And then on Friday is where you fund, okay? So you have three calendar days in between because Monday on a rescission period, the day that you sign on a refinance transaction, that day does not count as the first 
day. On a closing disclosure, if you sign your dis closing disclosure on a Thursday, that does count as the first day. So you can see here where you know you can have up to you know six business days, or if you mix in some holidays with there, it can really lengthen it out a little bit. But the closing disclosure, regardless of what type of loan, always has to go out. And if you sign the closing disclosure at 11:59 p.m you know, one, one minute before midnight on a Thursday night, that counts as a full day, as, as though you had signed it any other time during the day. Then you pick up your Friday and your Saturday. You can sign the docs on Monday. And if it's a purchase transaction, the loan can fund and record on that same day. So you can sign the closing papers for your purchase at noon, one o'clock, and the wire can go out and it can be funded and recorded on the same day. If this same transaction was a refinance transaction, closing disclosure goes out, gets signed on Thursday, that's day one, two, three. You can go and sign your papers now on Monday, but then now you've got the additional three-day period that goes in there for the rescission period and it would fund on a Friday. So just to kind of help you remember this a little bit, and. I know this is politically incorrect and I might get in trouble for this, but when I was a little kid and I would go to church and they would always talk about how Good Friday, we always had Good Friday and then you had Easter. Good Friday was on Friday, Easter was on Sunday. You got Friday, then Saturday, then Sunday. And I used to say, well, if Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, well, if he died on Friday, wouldn't three days from then, wouldn't that have been Monday? <laughs> like. Saturday, Sunday, and then rose on the third day as Monday? No, he rose. But actually, the, the, back in Israel, among the Jews, okay, the day that you died was day one, as long as you died before sundown. And apparently Jesus did die before sundown on a Friday. So Friday was day one. And they counted Sunday as a, as a, as a rescission day. So anyway, you figure that out. So the counting on there, if that helps you, maybe it's not. I'm sure I'll get some comments. But anyway, on a closing disclosure, the day that you sign counts as the first day. On a refinance transaction, the day that you sign does not count. So hopefully that explains why you have these additional time frames and why sometimes it takes a little bit longer to close a loan, which goes back to another video as to why you really can't close a loan in 10 days. So, because there's disclosure requirements from the time the initial disclosures go out in seven days and all this other stuff, timelines that kick in, and I'm not going to labor anybody and bore them with that. But anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for coming into the creditjungle.com today. Remember, you can push button, get mortgage professional. This is George Anderson, and I look forward to working with you soon. Have a great day.